Combat in games is the most crucial part of gameplay, especially when you take into the account that nearly 90% of games we play have violence in them. But what they also have is great combat, whether you play as Doom Slayer, which is bad example for this video because Doom Eternal has a perfect gameplay. It has flaws such as bugs and some glitches, but overall the satisfaction from getting more and more skilled is perfectly done there. But to give you a good example, I will use my old friend Dead Island 2. No! Where is the ball? Yes! They get crushed! No! These two games have similar vibes. Both are zombie games, both were scrapped over and over again, but only one got to be what everyone anticipated. So it's going to be a good standoff, and actually, in my opinion, Dead Island 2 has best gameplay in the genre. Dying Light 2's combat is straight up bad. I don't mean the weapon animations or that the dropkick isn't as satisfying as in Dying Light 1, but what I mean by that is that Techland wanted to create a system that doesn't work. Like, at all. They scrapped the third skill tree and instead went with two skill trees, where with each skill you unlock something new that you may add to your daily arsenal. But literally half of them is badly used and useless, like ledge takedown or three different skills that do basically the same thing and could be combined into one. Or bow skills could be developed into something like bow master that infuses precise aiming and power shot and then second skill like bow legend that infuses parkour shot and serial shot. Let the Techland use this space for something better rather than for us to spend 4 points for skills in which you only use power shot or parkour shot occasionally. And this is also something I haven't talked about in previous video where skills are game changing but some of them are literally useless or could be done in one slot rather than three. Like the dodge skill where you have to time your sprint. In my opinion they could scrap the dash skill and just combine after boost with dot, adding a layer of tactical use to it, leaving more slots for other skills. This could also fix the issue where sometimes you sprint and still can't jump over enemy. You would have to press sprint before jumping making it smoother. But this is a little side note, I'm here to talk about the combat. have vast array of weapon categories but despite that three of them do the same thing and another four are literally the same thing but one with more distinct animation. Then you have knives that are the most distinct cause they were simple machetes but had an update to them but it works the same as machete but faster and strong attacks doesn't connect well. Then you have katana that also had updated animations but primarily was the same as any other two handed weapon and currently does the same thing as any other two handed weapon but with different animations. Despite the differences on the paper you literally have only 3 or 4 different categories with the exception being knuckle dusters that were the fastest weapon in the game but after knife update they fell into the oblivion and are basically knives but worse. But they look good though so kudos to Teclan. I guess. On the other hand you have Dead Island 2 where each weapon feels differently, sometimes even if they are in the same category. It might be cause of visual differences but despite that I'm convinced that each weapon leaves different cuts and bruises. You also have vast array of weapons but with each one working differently this time. You have so many different finishers in each weapon category that as I stated before you just use them cause they are fun not because they have good stats. I find myself picking grey weapons cause some of them look more appealing to me and it doesn't matter if I can install mods or not cause weapons in Dead Island 2 are for you to have fun rather than squeeze last juices from your 700 durability one shot in axe that you can fix in a blink of an eye at Pater Masters. You don't have special animation for it like in Dying Light 1 where you had to think it through whether you fix the weapon before throwing yourself into the fray or fix it the go risking getting killed or interrupted. But this leads me to the next point, which is Upgrades to the weapons are diminished to absolute minimum. You don't have creative blueprints like God's Hammer or Mohawk where each one looks different and can be used on only specific weapon, which was the case in First Dying Light as well as Dead Island 2. Instead you can apply different mods to tip, shaft and grip. 
but the mods look exactly the same, no matter which weapon you use it on. The electric mod is always a small battery and the flame mod will always look funny. In Dead Island 2 you can apply the same mod to the tip and shaft but it will look differently on each weapon. It's basically the same concept but actually done good. The hit detection is also much better, leaving cuts and blows on the zombies in such a realistic way that it's uncanny. On the other hand, in Dying Light 2, even after gut feeling update, the weapons still work goofy and when you cut downward, you suddenly cut head or cutting diagonally will cut hand in the most unrealistic way. The best example is wall kick. It exists in the game and some players might actually never know about it, but it's done so junky that the players who know about it badly use it cause it hurts the eyes. So the weapon mods are done very unprofessional but they are in the game, so that's something I guess. But collecting distinct blueprints and hunting them for fun was a part of first dying light that added to the exploration immensely. We all remember kicking the box over 50 times for correct machete, or climbing the bridge not knowing that a cool blueprint is there. It's absent in Dying Light 2, instead you go to Quartermaster and buy everything. Last thing that doesn't work but should are classes. You have close classes like Bruiser, Medic or Archer, but all they do is change percentages. There is a mechanic that was applied in Far Cry 6 but was done bad there where you had skills tied to particular outfit items, but it would work perfectly for Dying Light 2. Imagine having to wear certain gloves that make you collect more loot, or footwear that lets you sprint for longer, replacing dash skill. It would add a layer of unique legendary items like in Borderlands or even Dying Light 1 where you had cool dagger with unique skill, or Van Helsing outfit that lets you throw weapons and they go back to you. This change would improve the entire system immensely, but instead you deal 10% more damage with 200 weapons where you mainly use axes that one shot volatiles even without the outfit, or medic boots that heal you for 15% more but you spam medkits that heal you for max health anyway. You see how nothing complements itself and it's all a mess. The unique outfit system would fix everything, especially with transmog in the game. And I saw your comments about how only a small team is working on updates and majority is focused on DLC 2, or that majority of Dying Light 1 stuff actually left Techland. So probably these ideas will never come to fruition. But if I had one wish, I wish that Techland actually reworked some of the mechanics before DLC 2 drops or place them in Dying Light 3.